For today's detailed analysis, I have already done the reaction to this. If you haven't seen it, make sure you jump into the description, you check out the video there because it's got all the clips that I'm going to be breaking down. But look, we've got a banger for you today. Today's detailed analysis is going to be a little bit different. What is good everybody out there? Thanks again for checking in with Core Thoughts, the channel where we basically talk basketball. Normally I go through and break down the highlights and tell you about all these things that you can do to go through and implement from their game into your game. Everything's gonna be really concept based today. It's concepts that I could see that Dejan was actually displaying. And the first thing is drown your opponent. The idea is that you want to take them out of spaces that they're not familiar with. For myself, occasionally I'll have to play into positions that are bigger than what I normally would. I normally play in the three, I can play in the two, but I formerly was a point guard, right? And so I have found myself in positions where I've had to step in and play the four role. Playing against guys who are maybe six foot six, six foot seven, I'm six foot tall, it's the height disparity throws people off because people sometimes get intimidated by that. But me being a shooter, I do things and go to positions that they don't anticipate I will go to. If you play the four, like in the example that I'm talking about right now, they're probably expecting you to go up as high as maybe the elbow. But if you go to free throw extended on the three point line, or you go deep corner three, or you go top for three, the defense isn't prepared for that type of movement. And oppositely, you can have similar positions that you can be in when you are a guard, where you're playing maybe in the post or starting and circumventing around the post area. The idea behind this really is that try to build your game to focus on getting to shots that you want to, right? So like the example I'm giving you about shooting from the three, it's because I'm a shooter, I love to shoot. And so I wanna take the defender out of a zone where they're not prepared for, and they're not really going to be able to deal with me. If you look at Dejan's game, he was actually doing a lot of similar things. I was saying in the video, I wasn't too familiar with what position he was playing or even how big he was, but I could see that he was a larger guy and he wasn't going to the post. And now you have another player defending you who's not normally going to be there, they're generally not going to know how to react with you. It's a big reason why you can look at guys like Steve Nash had a lot of success playing out of the post with like fade moves and sort of scoop finishes and inside finishes. But also even recently, you can look at guys like Nikola Jokic, fantastic success in having the ball at the top of the key or even bringing the ball down because bigs are like, what are you doing? Like you shouldn't be there. The idea is to try and put them in a dangerous spot and make them have to swim in those deep waters. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is being deception focus or just really focusing on being deceiving on the court. When I think back to my first time watching uh, Dejan do the sham god, I was doing a lot of research at the time trying to develop my own sham god for a fast break situation and it, I picked up on the footwork and that footwork was one of the things that led me down another path for something completely different. But the idea of making your opponent think you're going to do something else to create other opportunities. Another player who was actually really good at this, but in a different way was Camelo Anthony. Camelo Anthony, when he was playing in the post or in the high post action, especially when he was in that sort of triple threat position, like his best position to be in, you can see how he would read from those jab steps. He was using the same sort of thing with like stepping across his body or lazily stepping or toe tapping and these types of movements and it's because you're focused on being deceptive now if you take a moment and really think about your game right i can't answer this for you obviously in this setting but think about your game think about what you're really really good at and think about the complete opposite all you have to do is think about how can you get the defender to focus on the opposite of what you're trying to do so if you want to drive you need to be an effective shooter but Work on your hezzy and your drop fakes and things like that to try and deceive them in thinking that you're shooting. Now, obviously, you have to be a threat shooting to then create that driving opportunity, but they can kind of feed back into each other. So really drive your game in being deception focused, and I think you're going to have a lot of success like Dejan. The last thing that I'm going to talk about is simplify your game. Bro, I mentioned this 
in my Bradley Beal video. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and give it a watch. But I also mentioned it in my Jimmy Buckets video. Both of those guys' games are really, really simple. They're not overly complicated. And I love it because when you overcomplicate things, you make more room for error. And so when you simplify your game, you basically look at it as routes. Well, I have route A, which might be pull-up jumper. I have route B, which is drive to the bucket. I have route C, which is come off a curl and catch and shoot or whatever the case is for you, right? And so you're trying to go through these routes and basically change the order and create this sort of way that you can simplify your game for you to be effective. I saw in a recent video that a coach was talking about the most effective shots. So I was talking about like free throws, layups, corner threes, right? And so the idea is that when you look at guys that have the most points scored, they generally have inflated numbers across those areas, right? But obviously accuracy has a big play into it, minutes played, shots taken, usage percentages, all that sort of stuff, all that analytical stuff that, you know, basketball nerds like me absolutely love. But the idea of simplifying your game is the simpler your game, the more room for freedom and adaption that you have and allow yourself to have the space to be creative within it. And the more creative that you can be, the easier it is to see success. Look guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I had a lot of fun breaking Dejan's game down. Thank you so much, Murd, for your comment. I absolutely loved checking out this video. I, I realized now that I had seen that move, the Spanish whip or the original sham god, that I've definitely seen this guy before, but I hadn't seen a lot of those clips. I had really only seen a handful of clips. Uh, and I really do appreciate you going in the comments and making that recommendation. If you have recommendations of players you'd like me to go through and react to, jump in the comments and let me know. Also, check out my community tab. I've got a, uh, a voting poll that I put up in there to let you guys know about players I'm interested in reacting to. And then you can let me know of those players who is your favorite. You can just let me know your favorites all together. And another way that you can do that is by checking out my Facebook page. Go ahead, check it out. Last thing that I want to comment to, and I mentioned it earlier in the video, is that um, anytime I do these EuroLeague videos, I generally find that they get flagged. So please, if you can like and subscribe, it would be absolutely amazing, especially as I'm trying to hit my 10K milestone. I could absolutely do with all the love and support from you beautiful people out there. But that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for kicking it with your boy. And until I see you next time, make sure you're looking after yourself. You take care and be safe. All right.